Hi everyone, I want to talk today uh, about a, a short verse from uh, Song of Songs. You know Song of Songs, that book in the Old Testament. Um, I've been helped very much by reading through it recently in my own daily Bible reading by using these Explore Bible reading notes. They are often terrific, I just want to give them a bit of a plug. Um, and the notes particularly on Song of Songs were tremendously helpful. Um, the church office, I think, has brought in quite a number of copies of these notes. They're there to be given away for free. So if you'd like to use these for yourself, um, contact Vavra in the church office and I think he'll be able to give one to you or tell you that they've all gone already and you're a bit late. But uh, get in touch with Vavra. Uh, Song of Songs, I'm sure you know, I mean, an extraordinary book, a, a to and fro between he and she. A young man and a young woman, a young couple clearly in love. And there are things in it that people might think you're not really supposed to find in the Bible. I mean, at times it's pretty sexual. There's quite a lot of quite a lot more talk about a woman's breasts than some people might think really ought to be in the Bible. And in the middle, it's pretty clear that the language is very pictorial and metaphorical, but it's clearly talking about a young couple coming together in sexual union. Um, for the first time on their wedding night. So Song of Songs has long been recognised clearly as a, as a celebration of sexual love expressed rightly between a man and a woman within marriage as God has given it to be. Uh, that's nothing to be a, ashamed of. Or, uh, it's, it's a wonderful gift that God has given uh, for those to whom he gives the gift of marriage. But the Christian church has also long seen the Song of Songs, and, and rightly so, as talking ultimately about Jesus Christ and his church. Because, of course, right through the Bible and into the New Testament, Jesus is pictured as a bridegroom and his church as the bride. Um, and our union with Jesus when we put our trust in him, it's like a bridegroom and a bride coming together. Um, in the union of marriage. Um, and just one short verse, chapter 1, verse 15. The bridegroom says to his bride, How beautiful you are, my darling. Oh, how beautiful. How beautiful you are, my darling. Oh, how beautiful. And if you hear that coming out of the mouth of Jesus towards his church, Christ thinks of his church as his darling, and he thinks that his church is beautiful, so beautiful he wants to say it twice, how beautiful you are my darling, oh how beautiful. Just for now two reflections on that. First of all, what is it that Jesus thinks is beautiful about his church? Because of course it is all too easy to, to look at the church and for many of us to look into our own lives and our own hearts as Christians and say, I struggle to see anything that Christ would look at in us and in me and call beautiful. I mean, it is very easy, isn't it? And in a sense, it's right to look into ourselves and see a great deal of the sin that remains. We, we mustn't be in denial of the sins we continue to commit, of the sins that remain in our hearts. It, it's there. It will be till we die. And and we're to grieve over it. So what is it that Christ finds beautiful? Well, I think one way of putting what Christ finds beautiful about his people is he finds beautiful his work in them that is happening already. See, Christ is already at work in us. Um, Galatians chapter 5 will say that the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience and so on, that it simply is growing in the people in whom the spirit of the Lord Jesus lives. That is, those who trust in Christ. There may be times in our lives where we see more of the sin in us than the fruit of the spirit of Christ in us. But, but it is there. Uh, there will be ways in which you are more loving, more patient, more kind than you were 10 years ago than you were before you ever knew the Lord Jesus. Maybe those ways have grown familiar to you, but, but Christ has done it in you. He is doing it in us. 
People regularly come among believers, don't they, when, when we're able to do so, and say, oh, how they love each other more than many other people that I meet. Christ is at work in his people. He is at work in every individual believer, bringing about new life in him. And when he looks at us, when he looks in us, he sees that. And he says, that, that is beautiful. Who they are becoming in me, that is beautiful, says Jesus. Uh, second thing I want to reflect on is, what, well, why would we need to hear Jesus saying this to us? How beautiful you are, my darling, how beautiful. Well, think of a bridegroom and a bride. What, what impact does it have on the bride? When she hears the bridegroom say, how beautiful you are, my darling, how beautiful. That's going to make her warm in love towards him all the more, isn't it? You are just going to warm towards the person who keeps saying, my darling, you are beautiful. Jesus says these words to us so that we will warm all the more in love to him. Now, of course, in his word, in the riches of his word in the Bible, Jesus is going to say a lot of different things to us so that we will warm more towards him in love. But sometimes he will rebuke us and discipline us and point out the sin that is there so that we will fight it all the more and grow closer to him. Sometimes that is the word we need. But if that were the only word he gave us, well, in the end, most likely that would do us down. We keep looking inside and saying, do you know, Jesus, you're right. I'm a total failure. All I see is sin and darkness. And that is going to lead to spiritual depression and maybe even just giving up. If that were his only word to us, it is part of his word to us. It's a word that we need, but it's not his only word. Part of his word to us so that we were warm in love towards him is to say to us, yes, in, in a sense, I know you still sin. I know there is sin and darkness in you and you grieve over that just as you should. But I also have this to say to you, Jesus says, how beautiful you are, my darling, how beautiful. So that we will see that in us and as it were, not spiritually despair and say, yes, he is at work in us. He is growing his beauty in us very slowly, all together as we live together as his people. Over the years, yes, that is growing. There are times that I, I know that I need that word from Christ as an encouragement to warm again in love to him. He has not given up on me or us. He still finds me, us, beautiful. He still keeps wooing us, drawing us to himself so that we will... Uh, persevere in loving him and grow to love him all the more deeply. I guess today you will know for yourself whether the word you most need from Christ to draw him to you is a, a word of rebuke and warning to fight sin or whether the word that you most need today from him is this word how beautiful you are my darling how beautiful so that you will be reassured again he is at work in you bringing about his beauty in you, drawing you more to love him. I'm going to pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you give us the different words, messages from you that we need to draw us in love to you. And for those of us who need to, need to hear this morning, this word, how beautiful you are, my darling, how beautiful, that you say that to your church. Write that deep in us, we pray, so that we will praise you all the more for your beautiful work in us. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.